Oof. That water was good. <laughs> What's going on, fam? What's going on? Hope everybody's doing great. Everybody's doing fantastic. Or at least we're keeping a positive attitude. It is quite hot in the house. So if you see the sweat coming down, ignore it. But I'm sure you guys saw the title, so we're going to get into it. Today's title is all about heroism. Heroism. I'm sure we've, we've all um, you know, come to the understanding, the realization that right now the world is in need of a quote-unquote hero. We are in need of salvation. And I'm not saying salvation in the, the traditional religious sense, but when I think of salvation, I think of an overhaul, a redoing, a, um, a revamping of our societal structure, of our society on a micro level and on a macro level, you know, on a small level and a large level. And as everybody is going through their developments and, uh, you know, everybody's putting their idea of what a solution is, Oftentimes, everybody is is seeking to become the hero. Everybody's seeking to be the savior. And I just want to talk about that that idea just a little bit um, and expound on it. So, the first thing when I when I hear when I see people wanting to become hero, and this just seems to be the the common thing, and this is nothing new. And when we're talking about heroes, we're not talking about for the world all the time. Sometimes we're talking about for our small circle. Sometimes it's a parent to the child. Sometimes it's a, uh, a brother or to the sister, or sister to the brother, the child to the parent. It's it, this this thing, this archetype is expressed everywhere. But I, I find that our society has this pretty messed up. It has a very... Fatal flaw, it's pretty small, it's just a small misunderstanding, but that small misunderstanding has very huge ramifications for the, the, the generations to come and the people that they're attempting to save. And so I, I write my things in notes, I'm going to read it off to you for just a moment, and it's not long, but it's it's really what becoming a hero is, and this is what most people think it is, and I'm going to tell you what I think it is. What most people think it is, is being the hero, it's putting the needs of others before yourself. Putting the needs of others before yourself. What I think the true definition of a hero is putting the needs of others before your wants, not your needs. It's putting the needs of others before your wants, not your needs. So we're going to dig into this just for a moment. We were stating that the world needs a hero and a savior, more or less. And I explained what a savior was. It was a revamping. It is a model of how the society should be. Right? It's a model of how the society should be. Do you want a society full of martyrs? Personally, I think the idea of the martyr is played out. It is something that is actually quite detrimental. It puts this notion that dying for things is the way to go. And I'm actually, I do know where, but I think there's that's a very, <laughs> it's a slippery slope when we talk about dying for people. It's a very slippery slope. And I don't think we should even be at the level where we should be dying for people. If anything, when I think of dying for people, I'm not going to even think about dying for people. I'm going to be thinking about dying for myself. And it won't be a physical death. It will be a sort of an ego death. I'm not for killing your ego completely. I think that's nonsense. But when I think about dying for yourself, it's more so putting away those habits, those patterns, those, those thoughts, those beliefs that keep you trapped in cycles of suffering. Right. So when people say they're going to die for somebody, they're die for a cause. I think this is ludicrous because if you really believe in a cause that must. Why, why would you sacrifice yourself for it, especially if you're a proponent of it, instead of living within those principles and being an example for what that ideal is or that idea is? 
Why would you die for somebody instead of living and being a model for that person? We got to think about this, y'all. We really got to think about this. And I'm going to just, I'm going to use the parents as an example. I hear a lot of parents say they'll do anything for the child and they'll die for their child. But my question is, why do you feel the need to die? Why would you not live for your child? I can get if it came to a point where you'd have to choose between sacrificing between yourself and your child. I'm not saying what you should do at that point, but I can understand it at that angle. But for the large majority of circumstances, that shouldn't even be a thing. A large majority, that shouldn't be a thing. That's not heroism. Heroism is is putting the needs of others before your wants. And I want to expound on that now. That's not, you know, letting your boundaries down so that you can help somebody else. Because when you compromise your integrity, your actual integrity, your structure, your boundaries, for other people, what you're doing is twofold. One, you're telling them that it's okay to encroach. It's okay to become dependent on you. It's okay to not respect your needs and wishes, or well, really just your needs, because if you're letting them in, you, you don't have a wish to not let them in. But the second thing you're doing is you're compromising your own structure. You're not being a hero. You're actually being a villain. Why? Because the people that are watching you and your actions are stating that it's okay to sacrifice what you need for development for everybody else. The, the, the fact of the matter is that you are never anybody's actual healer. You will never be somebody's actual healer. You can't do it for people. You can't walk the journey for them. You may guide them. You may assist them. You may coach them. You may mentor them, but you can't do it for them. And so this, this idea of dying for somebody, like you're taking their place is ludicrous because you can't take their place. The best thing you can do for somebody is to fulfill your needs and allow your love to overpour or overflow into them. That is the correct way of being a hero because what you're doing is you're showing them. You're not telling them. You're showing them how you live your best life, how you're supposed to actually live. And you're supposed to live yourself first and foremost is the law of nature. We are meant to survive. Live after that, but survive. So we got to have self-preservation. And it's no, there's no honor in not preserving yourself. There's no honor in allowing yourself to fall to the wayside. There's no honor in, in not getting to your full potential so that somebody else can. There's no honor in that. None. Because your predecessors or your, your, um, your, your, uh, your offspring are going to keep that path. They're going to copy you. And so what you what you meant to do was, you know, be a bridge for people. But really what you became was a hindrance because your your offsprings are going to look at you as the example. And your example was self-sacrificing and non-fulfillment. You came here first and foremost for your mission and your mission may be to help other people. But your mission will <laughs> when, you, when you're following your divine purpose, your mission, there won't be this split. There won't be these contradictory things at play. It may seem like that when you are developing and when you're trying to get your understanding. Give me a second. You know, I got to get some water. Excuse me. It may seem that, you know, sometimes there might be a, a rift or a split in what it is that the universe, your purpose is. Or what the universe is trying to let you do or tell you to do or what God is, is wanting you to do or Allah or whoever you, you subscribe to and pray to. But the truth is that it won't be that difficult. It'll actually be quite clear cut. What we, what we often do is we don't actually, one, we're not tapped in enough to source. We're not tapped into self at all. And so these contradictory vo voices are not the same voice or two different things are typically the earthbound ego. And I say earthbound ego because it's a different conversation on, you know, your higher ego, which is yourself, which is, you know, a fragmentation of the all. 
or a compartmentalization of the all, which is why you have a particular mission and not a, a worldwide global mission. We all do, but it's a reason that we don't act on that. You're, you're hearing your earthbound ego, and then you're hearing your call of your higher self, God, higher power, whatever you want to call it, right? That's where the confusion comes into play. It's because we're not actually tapped back in completely. We're not connected back completely. So we're we're confused on what this idea of heroism is. And we're confused on what it is that we are supposed to be doing. So in order to get clear, you got to tap back in yourself. You need to meditate daily. That's a must. It's a must. Tap back into yourself. Cultivate your energy. Cultivate your awareness. Cultivate your focus. And get clear. Get very clear. And only when you're clear can you actually be a hero because once you're clear, you know what you're supposed to do. And once you know what you're supposed to do, then you can lead the way. But if you don't know what you're supposed to be doing, how are you going to tell the people what they're supposed to be doing? And if you've never done it, how are you going to tell the people to do it? And how can you give proper instructions even if you do say that? You won't know. You'll be thinking, you'll be acting and talking out of theoretical knowledge instead of empirical knowledge or or or. Actual experience. You, in order to be the real hero, you got to live off an of actual experience. And oftentimes the real heroes, the real heroes, you get a lot of stuff thrown at you. People don't always agree with what it is that you are doing and what it is that you're saying. Why? Why is this the case? Because oftentimes when you're the hero, you're acting in somebody's highest good and not their temporary satisfaction you're acting for their you're acting in their longevity and not in their temporary moment and a lot of the times when people are getting into alignment when people are falling in and out of alignment they're not aware of of anything past of cur the current situation when you're when you're just surviving you're you know your lower three chakras or really your lower two to be more accurate um you're surviving. You don't, you're not really thinking past today. You're not really thinking past just barely making it by. But when a hero comes by, what they do is they see something greater than in you and they see something bigger in you and they act to bring that forth. They act out of your highest good and oftentimes people can't see that. And when people can't see that, they think that you are, you know, you have ulterior motives, you're doing something wrong, or they misconstrue what you're really trying to do. And that's neither here nor there. But when you're the hero, you're going to take a lot of things. You're going to take a lot of whips. You're going to take a lot of attacks. That's why you got to make sure your needs are taken care of first. So that you're not just taking attacks and running on empty. But, you know, you might be taking a tax, but you got yourself covered. That's really what a hero heroism is all about. It's 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 seeing the best in people and acting out of that best in somebody. It's seeing past the current situation or circumstance with somebody and acting in their highest good, regardless if they appreciate it or not in that moment. And the thing is, you're not always meant to be a hero to everybody. You're not meant to be a hero to everybody. And that's okay. You have to be okay with the limitations of your reach. You have to be okay with limitations on your reach. And if you're not, you're always going to fall into this, um, this downward spiral feeling less than or that you're not doing enough. So the last little bit that I wrote down is being becoming a hero or being a hero it's it's truly being being a model of how to live and it's not finding a reason to die it's being a model of how to live and not finding a reason to die one more time y'all it's fine it's it's being a model of how to live and not finding a reason to die I, i'm reading this book right now and man it it really it was it was a very simple thing, but it was very profound. And it stated, you know, in the beginning of time, some people wanted to, you know, they were willing to sacrifice everything. But the question that was posed is, are you sacrificing everything because you think it's a worthy ideal? Or are you sacrificing everything because you don't find pleasure in your life? 
Man, that had me going, hmm. Because I know a lot of people that say they die for things or they live for things. But my question is, why don't you live for yourself? Why don't you live to fulfill your purpose? Why don't you live to fulfill your mission? Why? And is that the in that in that that question unanswered? Is that why we're so eager to die for things? Is that why we're willing to submit to martyrdom? <laughs> Clearly, that was a word. Come up, it came up. That's really a question I want you to ask yourself before you embark on your hero's journey. And I think the hero's journey is the journey that we're all going through right now. At least the, you know the spiritual community, the conscious community, you know the woke community. And I mean the true community, not the people that are into it because it's fashionable or it's a fad or it's something that's going on right now. But I think the the true members of the community are going on the hero's journey because all the hero's journey is, is saving yourself. And in order to save yourself, you have to know self. And when you know yourself, you've saved yourself because you stop abusing yourself because you stop doing that, which you're not supposed to do. You start living in your purpose. You start fulfilling your mission day to day. But I wanted to just, you know, talk to you a little bit about that. It was on my mind to talk about and, uh, you know, I listened to the spirit. But that, that's really what we're, that's really what it's about. I'm going to recap real fast. Today's topic was over heroism. And the myth is that a hero puts the needs of others before themselves. And the, that's that's a myth. That is a myth. The correct thing is a hero puts the needs of others before their wants. Their wants. Because you may want to do a whole bunch of stuff, but that's not what you came here to do. And if you're truly a hero, you do have to sacrifice sometimes, but not what's necessary. You don't sacrifice what's necessary. You sacrifice the excess. You know? Um, and uh, at the end of the day, a hero is just a model... It's a model showing people uh, something to live for and not finding a reason to die. Stop finding reasons to die. Stop finding martyrdom. Stop glorifying martyrdom. It doesn't really do anything in the in the big scheme of things. If you were one of the most powerful proponents of a certain skill or a certain movement, why would you die when you carried momentum? Why would you do that? If you know you're the strongest one in the bunch, you carrying all this stuff on your back and you picking it up for the rest of the world, why would you die if you know they were dropping it before? You know, like we got to think about some of the stuff that we do and I'm not for just living for people. You sh definitely shouldn't, but you don't die for people either. You don't. You actually become a hero, a hero to yourself first. And typically, it's when it's typically the, the light that you shine onto yourself is what inspires other people. You know, inspiration is a secondary thing, in my opinion. You don't go out to inspire people. You become a hero to yourself. And by being a hero to yourself, you inspire other people because you 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 vibrate a light in them that they didn't know was there and they become alive again. You become a hero. You inspire people when you are you're doing what you're supposed to do because you become a guide on what they're supposed to do. You show them what it looks like when you're acting in your divine purpose and your divine function and your divine mission. It's always a secondary thing when you inspire people. You know, they always I always say at least everything should flow from the inside out. You don't give things away if it overflows. The overflow is is what other people receive. So the more you pour into yourself, the more you can pour into other people. But if you directly pour into other people, you leave your cup empty. You leave yourself exhausted, worn out, and you can't do your job correctly. And that light that you once had in other people's lives, you begin to dim. Because you messed up your priorities, you're too busy trying to be a hero. You're too busy trying to trying to look like a hero than being a hero. The hero don't always look like the hero, y'all. The hero does not always look like the hero. Sometimes the hero looks like the bad guy. Sometimes the hero is the one ruining the fun. Sometimes the hero is putting is 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 popping the veil, bringing the veil down, popping the glass window. Yo, sorry, y'all. Not around me. You can't live in ignorance. Be willfully ignorant if you want to, but you're going to know. 
And people don't like that all the time, but the the hero is not all the hero does not always look good. So always trying to look good is always not what is good. Get our priorities straight, y'all. Get our priorities straight. Become a hero to yourself. But that's it, y'all. I'm about done with this little uh this little rant. I hope you all enjoyed it. I hope you guys learned a lot from it. Share the video, you know, spread the knowledge. Love y'all. Peace.